Hello, ladies and gents, boys and girls, welcome to Tales with TR, episode 225A. I'm your host, Terry Ryan Jr., and I will be on the road again, surprise, uh, this weekend. I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to be in Tri-Cities, Washington, my old stomping grounds. And for those that don't know, and most don't, Tri-City, Tri-Cities, Washington, it's uh, made up of Richland, Pasco, and Kennewick. That's where I played junior hockey, part of my junior anyway, with the Tri-City Americans, most of my junior. And, um, I mean, I've spoken about that lots. I'm, I'm sure anybody that listens to this even semi-regularly is familiar with Major Junior, probably familiar with my career, and knows that Tri-City was a stop there, but a lot of people don't realize which cities they are because they're, they're they're smaller. I guess the whole area probably is made up to almost the size of St. John's. I'm going to guess 200, 250,000. Richland, Pasco, and Kennewick, if you added three of them together, Kennewick being the biggest, Kennewick being where the Toyota Center is, where they play. And um, I'm really looking forward to getting back. Tri-City is one of Tri-Cities, whatever you want to call it. People call it both. The team is Tri-City. I often say that. So it's a wild spot. When I went there to play, it was only like their fourth or fifth year of existence. People picture Washington State. They picture, A lot of people picture Seattle and all the rain and whatever in Seattle. And it's a lot like St. John's because it's on the water. Well, there's the Rocky Mountains right out there. So Seattle is on one side of the mountains. Tri-City, for lack of, I mean, it's a big area here. It's not literally like one side and the other side. But generally, if you were to look at that layout and the geography of it, Tri-City is for, it's southwest and quite a bit. I say outside Seattle often, but it's like two and a half, three hours. And it's largely desert, right? Like Tri-City, I remember it was, now I lived in Pasco with Mark and Nancy Eby. I'm really looking forward to seeing them again. Um, and Pasco, the smallest of the three. But still, I mean, I, I don't even know if you were there, if you'd realize one led into the other. It, it seems like one giant place to me. But um, anyway, Pasco. So my billets were great. A, a nice, a modest house. We weren't lacking for money or anything. They but they just had a real nice life. They, um, they, they raised dogs, for the most part, dachshunds. But I remember like being the dogs at bark and like there'd be like rattlesnakes around and black widows and there's cactus, you know, there's sand. It, it's the desert. And when I say that, because it's, you know, we're only talking five, six hours over the border, you know, from Canada, maybe a little further, but not much. Tri-City is on the border of of Oregon, which which, of course, is Portland, Portland Winter Hawks. Under Oregon is is California. Right. So you're you're west. But there, it's just the, the Northwest in particular, some awesome cities, but not as populated as the East Coast. You know, picture like, I don't know, if I'm in a random place like Pittsburgh, say, I, think I, I can, from New York to Philly to, I don't know, Chicago, I, I, on and on, Hartford, Albany, Trenton, wherever you went, all these places are, Chicago's a bit of a stretch, but still, still not that far if you think about the whole breadth, the scope of the West, right? Last week I was in Sun Valley, two weeks ago. Sun Valley is about seven hours from Tri-Cities, right? And then you got Boise's up there, Salt Lake is, you people out there consider that close and it's like 10 hour drive. Seattle and Portland are bigger cities and beautiful cities in Northwest USA, but even those are hours, yeah pretty much straight south but it's yeah we're talking three hours at least the area itself you know when i often go out west and say i love western united states and you know sun valley at last a couple weeks ago you know but these are like even sun valley i say i played in idaho and i did i mean i say but i played in boise and boise even boise is two hours from sun valley Right. I just talk about it like it's right there. If you said two hours to someone in Hartford, it'd seem what the fuck, man, that's a ways. Right. Um, anyway, just to give you an idea. So I'm going to go back myself and John Nasty Morasty. Now, Nasty Morasty plays one of the gyms. And if you guys have done any homework, whatever, he was on the Nasty Knuckles pod this week. Interesting interview. Um, 
you'll know that Nasty Morasty is a tough, tough customer and uh, played his junior in the Western Hockey League, has a very storied and interesting career. I've had him on here. I'll probably have him on again. I might even take my computer out there this weekend and get a few minutes with him, um, maybe in the hotel or whatever. But it's a beautiful spot. It's on the Columbia River. And um, it's just somewhere that, in ways, I, I consider it a second home because those years, man, from 14 to 19, I went out there at 14, they drafted me. Of course, you won't see that on Hockey DB, but because you'll see the Cornell Millionaires, and that is where I played that year. But 14, 15, I tell you guys, I played junior in Cornell, but I would fly down every other weekend to, to, to try city and practice with the team. By the time I was 16, it was really like my third year with the Americans. Then I played three years there. So my last year after Christmas, I played in Red Deer for the playoff drive, and I loved it. But most of my junior career was in Tri-City. And even when I was in Quinnell, I was affiliated, and I would practice five years, man, from 14 to 19. I remember being... 20 and going, man, I, I've spent a quarter of my life in Tri-Cities in Kennewick, Richland, and Pasco. And those are big coming of age years. So I still do consider it somewhat of a second home, or maybe you could say a third home. I throw Cornell in there, but you know, they're formative years, good friends, teammates. I got drafted there. I had my big years there in junior, 50 goals, raised money for the Todd Scholarship, Todd Clausen Scholarship Fund. Met some unbelievable people. Saw my friends get drafted into the NHL. Um, my roommate with Mark and Nancy Eby was Zenith Komarniski, another great guy and lifelong friend. So to say that I, when, when I say I love going back to Kennewick, you know, part of it's hockey, but part of it's just, you know, my, I became a man there, for lack of a better way to put it. Even when I got drafted to Montreal and you see some highlights, but I would go back to Tri-City, right? Like, and share those moments with my friends. And, uh, you know, I, I graduated there, right? I went to Kamaikan High School. I, I would have gone here to O'Donnell or even Quinnell QSS, but I just happened to be that year, my graduating year. I graduated a year early when I was 16 just because of the process. But anyway, without getting into all that, I skipped a grade really early on. So I was a year ahead. So I graduated at 16. Then I went to a couple of uni university years there. Um, we were affiliated. It was the campus of Washington State at Tri-City. So we would go up and, you know, watch the football games, whatever, like, you know, a as kind of alumni part of the school. So I, I, I just, there's a soft spot in my heart for the Northwest USA. And years later, I played in Boise again, not too far away, given the scope of things out there. But I'm really looking forward to going back. People are asking me what we're doing. We're going to auction off some jerseys after the game. It's a bit of a fundraiser. But um, I, I, I'm going back to drop the puck. They're basically honoring myself and Nasty. And we're going to sign whatever you guys have. I might have some books, but this isn't a money grab or, or, or a big auction involved. We're just going to drop the puck and hang out with uh, the junior team that put us on the map. So if you're a fan and you're in the area, I'm really looking forward to it. They're playing the Kelowna Rockets. Um, another historic team. And when I when I played out there, it was Tacoma. Right? They 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 moved to Kelowna. My second or third year junior, so I was there for that process. Tacoma, of course, is, is an outskirt of Seattle. But all of it, man, and the grunge movement was happening when I was out there. We were hanging out in Seattle. Usually a month didn't go by where, I mean, I know they were in our league, the Seattle Thunderbirds, but we also just went over there to chill and check it out once in a while. And they're big years to me. They mean a lot. So if you're in the area and you're thinking about it, trust me, I don't know how often I'm going to get back. It's just a long way. It's one thing. You know what my flights are tomorrow? Going here, Halifax, then Toronto, San Francisco, and then Kennewick. And I believe maybe even Seattle. Like, because Kennewick is it's it's a small little airport or Pasco it's, it is the airport's in Pasco so you know it's 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 a bit of a milk run it takes me the better part of a day to get there usually at least twenty hours it'll be twenty when it's said and done 
and that's rather quick. I have my two layovers are only for like an hour or two. That's how long it takes, man. Think about it. I'm coming from St. John's, Newfoundland, the furthest easterly point possible in North America. And I'm flying to Kennewick and I'm going through San Francisco. So San Francisco is on the complete West Coast. So there's really no reason to go to Kennewick via San Francisco unless it's just one of those places. It's just, I won't say hard to get to, but it can be tentious because you got all those flights and, you know, you got to rely on no delays. No, it's, it's a long way from where I'm coming from, but it's worth it to me because I love the people of Tri-Cities. And my time there was so valuable and appreciated that um, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I can't, I, I can't wait to be honest. Um, it sucks leaving my daughter and and friends, family so much to be honest with you. But for things like this, a it's part of my living. But for things like this, this is more of a visit than a money grab. Honestly, this is this is going back to our junior team and. Just uh, being able to get in touch with the people and the place and the places that helped shape who I am today. And I'm pretty sure Nasty would would mirror those thoughts. Um, So, again, if you're in the area. And by the way, when we played junior there, I'd never been to the bar in Tri-City. I I really mean this. People think, you know, uh, you guys were partying. Uh, We were tough Western League boys that got into beers once in a while, but not, it was very innocent. Yeah. Red Deer was a completely different story. I remember going there and you can go out, you can get into the bars in Red Deer when you're 18 and Tri-City is 21. So that's a huge difference. And when you're 18, they often look the other way for a 17 year. So pretty much all of our junior team in Red Deer could get into the bar. Usually Mort's Billy Bob's or the Blarney Stone uh, or Branley's. That's where we went back then. Um, You're in Red Deer. Bellinis. Uh, in try, it was just like Applebee's after the game. We might get together at some high school party or whatever, but we just hung out, man. We all hung out and we really didn't drink that much. I know you would probably think that's ludicrous given the time and the, and the place and the ease at which a teenager could get onto the bus with some booze. And that happened once in a while. Like we would booze if we were on a huge trip, you know, like maybe... Brandon, we would finish some Eastern leagues, Eastern, sorry, division swings in Brandon. And Brandon was literally 30 hours from try in the same league, 30 hours on the bus, halfway across the country, the continent, literally, that would be a bus drive. So I don't want to, you know, I think the coach coaches looked the other way with a wink and a nod. I, I don't remember being at allowed yeah you guys can just drink liquor you know on the way home i don't remember but i they must have known given our antics back there and i mean the smell (laughs) they must have but no one ever let on and whenever we drank at the back of the bus it was like we thought we were being extremely secretive and even then it was a different time but i don't think coaches could encourage drinking I, i i don't think that was cool any time in the last 50 years to be honest um You know, he asked my dad, drinking, of course, was accepted in the 70s. But Junior, he'll tell you, he didn't really drink that much on the, you know, there comes a time that you're still a kid and you might be allowed to booze or smoke or whatever, but just lots of people just don't do it. You're growing up and we had more fun, I don't know, hanging out and reading the hockey news. And God, we hung out a lot in Tri, man, but the vast majority didn't involve booze or anything like that. Yeah, it was uh, just a bunch of innocent kids having a good time. Well, innocent might be a stretch, but more innocent than you would think for sure. So anyway, really, really, really looking looking forward to getting back and, and seeing all my my friends and my billets uh, from yesteryear. So if you're in try, come on there. It's a, it's a, October 5th. I'm flying tomorrow. The game's on Saturday. It takes so long to get there. <laughs> so I have to leave tomorrow. Now. I'm going to have, I believe, I mentioned Nasty, but tomorrow we're going to have Andrew Peters back on. I like to have, Andrew's a good speaker, first of all, got some good stories, but he's got his own podcast, which uh, is going really well with Craig Rouvet. And that podcast is called After the Whistle. 
uh, and I, I do listen to it in a brain cramp, but I listen to it here and there. I love him. And Rivers is my old, Craig Rivet is my old uh, teammate in Montreal and Freddie. And um, Andrew's a great guy. So uh, I've had him on before, but I'm going to get some takes going into the season. I'm going to get more relevant takes here and there. I know you guys like the storytelling, and that's still going to be most of my pods. But I like to have Andrew back on once in a while to tell a lot the odd story. But I, I like to get people's relevant thoughts, and especially now in the Gregor show. I'll be on Tuesdays and Thursdays back on the Sports 1440 with Jason Gregor. We often talk more relevant, like current events. And so I like to brush up and have people like Andrew on who can ki- kill two birds with one stone for me. So we'll have we'll have him on tomorrow for you guys. Um, as of right now, I'm going to take off my daughter as training with Power, Ryan Power from Power Conditioning. So why don't we get right into it? If you are in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and you would like to strengthen your mind and your body and get some balance for the body and mind, physical, mental acuity, what would you do? You'd go to Ryan Power at Power Conditioning, like my daughter's doing right now with her, her friends Claire, Aaliyah, and Peyton. He's awesome. Trust me. I talk about it all the time, but if you're going to train and you're a kid, you got to have fun, right? I, I hated, hated when I was a kid or, you know, when I was 13, 14, 15, I remember sloughing at it, but you got to do some extra work on the side. And immediately, I won't name names. People around here know there were people that were like slave drivers and I fucking hated it. And then all of a sudden I met some people. Farron Burns was one. Ryan then, Ryan's two years younger than me, but Ryan was was on his own hockey journey and was always into training and fitness and so early on i remember going to ryan and and farron and 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 bobber thompson from here is another one um there that johnny reed's another guy here he's pretty good these guys make it fun right so i'm not going to sit here and, and and i just think ryan's the best i haven't seen everybody but uh i've i've worked with them and all, all the people I mentioned are real, real good around here, or I wouldn't have mentioned them. There's more bad, trust me. More of these people might have a certificate, but they don't know how to treat people. Well, Johnny and Bobber and Ryan and these people know how to treat people and how to make it fun. We're athletes themselves. And I just think Ryan is, uh, for my purposes, I've... I've, uh, I've I've never been let down. I've recommended people go there, and I see with my own eyes the improvement of people like Abby Newhook, Maggie Connors, Alex Newhook. I mean, look these people up and look at the success that they've had. And it's not just that. I'm, I'm mentioning that because they're international names that you'll know. Um, but all kinds of local soccer and anything, badminton, he's, he's packed out there. And it's all ages. And trust me, you, you can only benefit by going to see Ryan Power. I couldn't recommend it enough. If you're downtown St. John's and you want to go for a coffee or a bite or just check out the scenery on George Street, why not check out Trinity Pub? Why not check out Martini Bar, Rob Roy Confusion, Green Sleeves, and, of course, the Bull and Barrel. If you're going to go for a bite to eat, check out Loose Tie, Blue on Water, and Wedgwood Cafe. They also do catering at Wedgwood Cafe and Elizabeth Avenue. And remember, Loose Tie is coming on. It's a great bar. It's a great restaurant, and it's part of Green Sleeves. If you want to go to Mr. Lube, there's two locations here in Newfoundland and Labrador. One is on Kemmer Road. One is on Torbay Road. Support Chris Sparks, one of my good buddies and one of the best athletes to ever come from this province. Live, laugh, lube, Pitbull Pain Relief. Pain sticks just don't quit. Go to pitbullpainrelief.com. See what all the fuss is about. Of course, true hockey. Take what's yours. Muggsy jeans. Most comfortable jeans I've ever worn. Thank you. Folks, I'll be back in just a couple of days. I'll catch you guys on the rebound. We got Andrew Peters coming. Have a great day. I know I will.